It's mutation time. So here we go. Pretty simple with mutation stuff. Just a couple little twists to, to look out for common mistakes. Here we go. So we are always around the central dogma here, right? What is a mutation? Describe the various types of mutation. So what is a mutation, right? A mutation is a change in this, classically, traditionally. But what does that cause? A change in that, which causes a change in that, which causes a change in phenotype, a trait. Except that sometimes a change in this doesn't cause a change in that because of the way the code works or maybe because of the way proteins work. You could even have a little change in a protein, but it doesn't function any differently. So all those different things we're gonna we're gonna come into into play here. Um, here they talk about some common errors that student make. I always like to throw these in there. Um, um, but first to identify this. This is one of their favorite things to do. You are going to get this for sure. Can you take your knowledge of concepts and tell us what would happen if we changed or disrupted some kind of component of a biological system? In this case, the system of information exchange that involves uh, the central dogma stuff, okay? So here they tell you that students also tend to describe all mutations as negative, bad, right? Mutations are just random, whether they're good or bad is a kind of a evolution thing. It depends on how they interact with the environment, right? Um, uh, and so uh, exposure to examples of mutations that have no impact, that has to do with the code being redundant. We're going to hit all those things. Um, uh, here's a common error that says mutations result in the denaturation of a protein. They might do that, right? But denaturation of a protein is more often referred to in terms of something like heat or pH causing that protein to change its shape, not because uh, DNA was mutated to make a different shaped protein. Um, and then this one I'm going to get to, I think they're going to rephrase this. This is, this is not a, I'm going to make a phone call. This is, I think, a mistake. So anyway, um, they tell you that alterations in a DNA sequence, which is, which is what a mutation is, right, can change the type of protein, obviously, or maybe the amount that's made. So that gets into a regulation thing. Maybe you change one of those proteins that's involved in causing the making of a protein to increase or decrease, right? And therefore, that will change the consequent phenotype. Again, here they say specifically, relating to that, that DNA mutations can be helpful, they can be harmful, or they can be neutral. Um, based on the effect they have on the resulting nucleic acid, that would be, again, RNA would be the nucleic acid that kind of is different because of a result in a DNA change, right? Or the protein and the phenotypes that are conferred by that protein, that's the trait part of the central dogma. So without all behind us, here we go. So what kind of um, substitutions are there, right? Describe the types of substitutions. Well, you have the kind where a single base is substituted for here again uh, this is sickle cell is the classic example um, uh, this is a point mutation there's three kinds of point mutations there's substitution which is this one there's deletion where one base is deleted and there's insertion in which one base is inserted. Point mutation, and I made sure I looked it up because this is kind of misleading. Point mutation means just one base has changed. So it can be any one of these changes, a substitution, a deletion, or insertion. Um, a, a common error that point mutations cause frame shifts, we're coming to those. These two kinds would cause frame shifts, but this one wouldn't. I think that's what they meant to say that a common error would be that all point mutations cause frame shifts. This one doesn't. So anyway, um, 
Uh, this little idea, remember, what causes genetic variation? Lots of recombination things, a couple of which we're going to get to here uh, in this video, um, but that if you don't have mutations starting, primary, beginning, the making of different genes, it doesn't matter how much you shuffle them around if they're all the same. So mutations are at the heart of genetic variation. All the rest is just recombination shuffling. Okay, so now here they have kinds of um, mutations that are also point mutations. They're, again, base pair substitutions. And this shows you that a substitution might not have any effect at all because of the way the code works. So here we have a DNA change, which they don't show on here, which resulted in this cytosine nucleotide being replaced by this uracil nucleotide in the process of transcription. But since to a ribosome, GGC and GGU both mean the same thing, glycine is still going to get put in here. The amino acid is no different, and therefore the protein is no different. You would predict that the function would not be any different, right? No impact on phenotype slash function. But if this G ended up being substituted by this A, now AGC to a ribosome means something different than GGC, and it puts a different amino acid. And now, going back to protein structure, it would depend on, really, the R group that serine has compared to glycine's R group, because even with a different amino acid, that protein might still fold up pretty much the same. Or maybe this amino acid is in part of the protein that isn't really functional, right? So if here's an enzyme, and this part of it has a different amino acid, that might not have changed the active site, and therefore you could also say no change predicted. Okay, now here's one that would make a big difference though, right? Because a base substitution in most places might change one amino acid at the most. But if this substitution happened, this A got substituted for by a uracil, right? Then you have reached an early stop codon. And now all of the amino acids from here to the end uh, are not going to be on that protein, and you would predict that would probably cause a bigger change since you have caused the deletion, in this case, of a bunch of different um, amino acids. So now here's the kinds called insertion or deletion. These are also point mutations, but they're the kind that can cause a frame shift mutation. Um, and what a frame shift mutation is refers to the reading frame, right? that the ribosome is going to read these three base segments, and that's determined by where the star codon is. It's every three bases after that. That's called the reading frame. And if now you take this U out, that's the first mutation they look at, right? Now from that point on, instead of having UUUGGC in the reading frame, you have UUG. GCU, and you have missed your stop codon. So you keep adding amino acids. Any frame shift mutation you would predict would have a large effect on protein structure and therefore on function. Here you have a frame shift where they added one here. They added it right here, right? Here's the AAG. Here it is now, but they put a U in front of it. And this one caused the same thing that changing that A to a U did in the last slide. It caused an early stop codon. Those are called nonsense, but that word didn't make the syllabus, so don't worry about that, right? So if this uh, insertion, this would be an insertion here, right? We inserted an extra base. When does this happen? This usually happens in a copying error, in replication when it doesn't get fixed. If we inserted one right here, instead of taking one out, we would have the same kind of idea. From that point on, there's a possible change in every amino acid, and therefore every um, uh, the protein would have a big difference. And added on to that, 
when you insert or delete, you're going to miss the stop code on it. It's not going to be in frame anymore. 